So let's solve this question. This has been asked in gate 2007. We have been given a number of requests and alongside each request we have been given a request size and the time duration for which that request lasts. Also we have been given that the allocation of blocks, the given blocks are done using best fit strategy. What is the best fit strategy? The best fit strategy involves allocating a block or allocating a request to a block which is closest to it. If you are able to allocate the exact block to the request then nothing like it. But even if the exact block is not available for a request we should allocate the block which is closest to it or which minimizes fragmentation to the least extent. Okay, so here we have been given four free blocks. You see, here we have been given four free blocks. The sizes are 4K, 8K, 20K and 2K respectively. And these requests which are given here, they are present in a queue. And we have been asked to find the completion time for request 7, for request J7. So how do we go about doing this? Now in order to solve this question, what we need to do is, we need to take help of a queue, right? So we have a queue of processes, right? So we have a queue of processes. And what is the order of my processes? J1. J2, J3, J4, J5, J6 and J7. Okay, so this is the order in which my processes are present. You can see. See, this is the order. J1, J2, J3 till J7. In fact, there is another one. J8 as well. So, I missed that. So, there is J8 as well. Right? And now, so we have 8 processes or 8 jobs in our queue. And... What we have is, we have the request size as well as the usage time. Now the thing is, whenever a job finds a appropriate block, appropriate block, it will be allocated, right? So let's just solve the question. I think you'll understand uh, while I'm solving it. So we have blocks of memory, right? We have four blocks of memory. So we have a 2k block, we have a 4k block, we have an 8k block and we have a 20k block. See it's given 4k, 8k, 20k and 2k. So we have been given four free blocks right and now what we have to see is these, these jobs they will be allocated a block as and when it is available. It's not that J1 will complete its execution in a block and then J2 will get hold of another block. No, it won't work that way. Blocks will be allocated parallelly as and when they're available. Okay. Now, so in order to find the completion time, we have to make use of a timeline diagram, right? So let's do that. So we have a number of times here. So I'm going for a timeline diagram. This will help me to find the completion time of J7. Okay. So let's see if we require more units of time, I'll add them. Now see what happens is we find that J1 is present in the queue at first. So queue follows the first in first out paradigm. So J1 will be dequeued and given a memory block but which memory block will it be given that depends on that depends on its request size see j1 has a request size of 2k and thankfully we have a block which is exactly of size 2k so j1 will get hold of this memory block right and see we have times here time intervals t1 t2 T3, T4, T5 and so on, T6, T7, right? Now, J1 gets hold of a memory block at this instant of time. 
and and for how long will it have this block it will have this block for usage time see j1 will have this block for four units of time so j1 will get hold of this block for four units of time that means one two three see four units of time yeah, so i have to extend one more right yeah so that makes for four units of time one two three four so this is my j1 now see what about j2 will j2 also start from the first unit of time yes it will why because there is a free block available see j2 has a request size of 14k so we do not have a block which is exactly of size 14k but the closest that we can come is a 20k block that we have here so j2 will get dequeued and be assigned this 20k block and for how many units of time see j j2 would require 10 units of time so we need to have j2 for 10 units of time so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 so am i counting it right so i have 1 2 3 mm, yes that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 i think this is where i should stop isn't it t9 let me count once again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I need one more, right? Yeah, so that is my J2. So my J1 and J2 are ready. And what about J3? Can J3 be allocated a block? Let's see. J3 has a requirement of 3K. Now I have a free block. I have two free blocks here. See, I have 4K and 8K. If I allocate J3, to 4k then there will be a wastage of 1k if i allocate j3 to 8k there will be a wastage of 5 5k units so it's better to minimize the wastage and allocate this 4k block to j3 so j3 will get hold of this 4k block right now see as j3 gets hold of this 4k block for how long will it uh, run it will run for two units its usage time is two units so it will run for two units now, so here we have one unit and two units, right? So J3 runs for two units. Now, next we have with us J4. So J3 was dequeued. What about J4? Can J4 get hold of uh, any block? Let's see. J4 requires. 6k now see i have an 8k block available with me so j4 might as well come and sit here so j4 gets hold of this block and can happen parallelly right so for how, how many units of time j4 requires eight units of time so j4 would require eight units of time so here we have one two three four five six seven eight yeah so that is j4 executing for eight units of time now what about j5 when will what is the requirement of j5 let's see now see all four blocks are occupied so j5 will come into existence when one of the blocks become free and it matches with j5's request size so let's see what is j5's request size j5's request size is a 6k right it's a 6k now the closest that we can come with the 6k is this 8k block now this 8k block will become available when j4 finishes its execution and j4 will finish its execution at this point in time see j4 requires j4 requires 8 units of time right so after the 8th unit of time this 8k block will be free so what is my 8th unit of time here right so at this point j4 will give up this block and j5 can come into existence so from this point onwards right so you see here one two three four five six seven eight so from this point we'll have j5 so let's see for how many units does j5 uh, have its requirement j5 requires four units of time so starting from this point starting from this point we require how many units for j5 four units it's always good to be doubly sure even if it involves multiple checkings 
of the same thing over and over again, it's good to be sure. Because in the examination, one mistake can cause the entire sum to go wrong. So I'll just add a few more time units. So I just hope this suffices. Now see, J5 requires four units. So we have one unit, two unit, three unit, and four units. So that's four units for J5. This is T10, T11, T12, T13, T14, T15, 16, 17, right? Okay, it's T17. Now see, this is my J5. So J5 was dequeued and it took place of J4, right? And now J5 will finish its execution at this point in time. And what about J6? What is J6's requirement? J6 has a requirement of, see, 10K. J6 has a requirement of 10K and its usage time is only 1. So 10K would fit in this block, right? We don't have a 10K block as such, but this is the closest that we can come for a 20K block. So G6 would get hold of this block once J2 finishes its execution. So J2 will finish its execution at this point. You see, it finishes its execution at this point, And from here, G6 can come into existence, right? So J2 finishes here and J6 will run for how many units? For only one unit. So that's J6 for us. And now, what about J7? See, J7's requirement is a 7K. Now, 7K, what is the closest that we can come? Now, 7K would fit into an 8K as well as into a 20K. But since we are going for the best fit strategy, the 7K would come closest to this 8K block. Not this one because there will be more wastage if we take a 7K requirement and place it in a 20K block. Placing a 7K requirement in an 8K block would minimize wastage. So we would go for this block. But J7 can occupy this block only when J5 has finished its execution. And where is J5? J5 will finish its execution at this point in time. Right? So J5, so J7 will be dequeued and will get hold of J5's position for how many units of time? See, J7, J7 requires 8 units of time for execution. Right? So J7 will start from j7 will start from the point where j5 leaves so it will start from this point it will start from this point this is the 11th unit of time and for how long will it run it will run for eight units so that would mean 11 plus 8 giving us a time of 19 right so if i add two more time units this is the point where j7 would finish right so this would be my T18 and this would be my T19. Please pardon me. I don't have much space left. So this looks a bit uh, untidy. But I think you understood because this is the point where J5 leaves off and J7 comes into existence. And for how many units will J7 run? J7 will run for 8 units. So this is the 11th unit of time and 11 plus 8 will give me 19. Therefore, the completion time, therefore, the completion time, the completion time of J7 is equal to 19 units. We did not, in, we did not need to investigate for J8 any further because it was clearly mentioned that the completion time for request J7 is required. See, the completion time for request J7 is required. So since we have found it, we can stop our computation here. So I just hope this helps. Thank you.